Uh, and now we are turning things over to Linda Greenhouse. Okay, thank you, Bob, and thank you, thank you, Beth. Uh, <clears throat> and you've given away the punchline of what I'm supposed to say by turning to you the object over your shoulder, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, the Patrick Soupy's Prize was established and funded in 2006 by Patrick Soupy's, a member of the Society for 22 years <clears throat> until his death in 2014. The Patrick Soupy's Prize honors accomplishments in three very different and deeply significant scholarly fields that reflect the spectacular scope of his own interests. The prize rotates each year between philosophy, psychology, and the history of science. Rich Schifrin, chair of the selection committee, will present the award. And here's what I'm supposed to say, which I'm happy to say will go to the speaker who just finished her fascinating talk and that's supposed to surprise everybody. But they're not surprised, but I'm sure they're all very glad that you've given this talk and that you're here virtually to accept this award. I'll now turn it over to Rich. Well, that was a terrific talk, Beth. Um, well, let me give you the award. Thank you. The recipient of the 2020 Patrick Soupy's Prize for a body of outstanding work in mathematical or experimental psychology is Elizabeth Loftus. In recognition of her demonstrations that memories are generally altered, false memories can be implanted, and the changes in law and therapy that this knowledge has caused. Of all the world's cognitive scientists, Elizabeth Loftus has carried out research that has had the strongest and most important impact upon society. As you've heard, she studies human memory. Her experiments reveal how memories can be changed by things that we experience, that we rehearse after the fact, and that we are told. She's the world's authority on the field known as false memory. She has shown how suggestions after a memory is formed can alter that memory. A research that has produced growing changes in the way that police interrogations are carried out so that initially uncertain memories are not transformed into certain ones. Even more startling, she has shown how strong, vivid, and compelling memories can be formed for personal experiences that never happen. For example, someone can form a vivid and uncertain memory of being saved from drowning while young, though no such event ever happened. This research led to a revolution in the way certain psychiatrists have dealt with their patients. These therapists convinced that adult problems were often the result of childhood sexual abuse, helped their patients form vivid memories of such abuse by their parents, abuse that never took place leading to destructive family interactions, lawsuits against innocent parents, and worse. Dr. Loftus and her research has almost single-handedly stopped these practices. In related research, Dr. Loftus demonstrated the uncertainties and ambiguities inherent in many instances of eyewitness testimony, leading to gradual change and reform in the fundamental bases of our legal system. It is especially appropriate for Elizabeth Loftus to receive this prize because Pat Soupy's was Dr. Loftus's thesis advisor. If Pat were living today, he would be ecstatic to see Elizabeth receive this award, as am I. On behalf of the Soupy's Prize Committee, it is my great pleasure to present the Patrick Soupy's Prize for pioneering work in mathematical or experimental psychology to Elizabeth Loftus. Congratulations, Beth. No, oh gee, thank you, thank you, Rich. Uh, he was like an older grad student when I was in grad school. So I, I do have, I do want to say that it is very meaningful for me to get this prize, especially at this particular time in my life. And as Rich mentioned, um, Dr. Soupies was my PhD advisor at Stanford, but. It wasn't until I graduated some 50 years ago that I was able to call him some, something other than Dr. Soupies. Uh, and it was only then that he became Pat to me. So I, I only have a, a couple of minutes, but I do wanna say that when I began my life work on the fallibility of memory, 
I really had no idea that it would one day prove to be such a socially relevant and politically explosive topic. Uh, of course, couples and siblings quarrel endlessly about whose memory of past events is right. And that, that's kind of the amusing and infuriating Rashomon aspect of every family's life. But, but who could foresee in the late 20th century recovered memory therapy, or that people would come to believe with all their hearts that they remembered being abducted by aliens or satanic cults. And who knew uh, by the first decade of the 21st century, we would find hundreds of individuals in prison who were innocent, who were proven innocent. And the major cause of their wrongful convictions was faulty human memory. And, and so as my memory work evolved, it, its findings became ever more applicable in the service of justice. And at the same time, the research became emotionally controversial and the focus of a lot of hostility uh, amongst those who really couldn't accept the findings. And, and so in my case, people wrote countless threatening letters. Uh, they tried generating, generating letter writing campaigns to the chair of my former academic department, to the president of the university, even to the governor of the state. Uh, they threatened violence at places where I've been asked to speak. Uh, that, that prompted a number of universities to provide armed and unarmed guards to accompany me during these speeches. They spread defamatory insults in their own writings and they continue to do that today. And then there was a lengthy lawsuit in which a woman who had accused her mother of child sex abuse uh, took offense at my efforts to investigate this probable wrongful accusation. And, and so through all these experiences, I, I guess I've learned firsthand that science is never dispassionate, at least not if you're studying anything that has political, emotional, or financial implications for people's lives. If you're studying something like child testimony or sex or the unreliability of certain psychiatric tests, or in my case, false memories. You know, I could have chosen to study computer assisted instruction or decision theory or mathematical logic or measurement as my dear former PhD advisor, Pat Soupies did. Hardly anyone would get exercised about that. Uh, but I chose to study human memory, eyewitness testimony, false memories, harmful therapeutic practices, and uh, big trouble came my way. Uh, I'm proud though, I have to say, of what I've been able to accomplish as a psychological scientist, proud of the people whom I've had a chance to help along the way. I've learned to accept these hassles as the price that scientists pay for doing research uh, that threatens deeply held beliefs. And I'm especially proud of the Soupies Prize. And given that he passed away seven years ago at the age of 90, true, uh, 92, I guess, I, I'm, I'm really, really grateful to the American Philosophical Society for having the courage to give this award to me.